significant. We was doing things that we loved. And I will say like, if you're gonna do something, you have to love it. If you don't love what you're doing, I feel like you're wasting your time because eventually you're probably gonna end up failing because you don't love it. When you're sitting down with a Robert F. Smith, right? And he's, a mo he's the richest person in America. And he's telling you things about like his life and things about what he's doing and things of things that we should be doing. It, it changes your mind. So that relationship really is like she didn't value your worth. And a year, a year or two from now, she's gonna be like, "Damn, I fucked up," because they think the grass is green on the other side. You're obviously open to a relationship. I will say this: you have to be with someone that respects what you do. That's really important because. This is your baby too. And this is gonna require a lot of time from you. And don't let the person that you're dating take away from your greatness because you're gonna resent them. And if you resent someone, it's not gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna form toxicity in you. In you. What's good y'all? We are back again with another episode of the Young and Dumb Show where we talk about everything Gen Z. We, we giving Gen Z gems, we giving Gen Z information, and we about to get it. I am here with Mr. Michael McDonald, co-founder of Earn Your Leisure. Um, you a superstar on the internet now. No, 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 I ain't <laughs> you a superstar, superstar on the stop, internet, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> right? But no. I'm gonna just give you the run of the show, right? So I really created this show because I feel like a lot of times we get information as me being a, a part of Generation Z, but I think sometimes the information isn't digestible for us, right? Mm -hmm. So you really, like, talk to your younger se self today. Talk to the person that you needed growing up. Talk to the person, like, this is when you talking to yourself, like, if was... I knew this when I was 16, 17, 18, maybe 20, what would I have done differently? Well, right? he was definitely young and dumb. <laughs> he was definitely young and dumb? <laughs> but uh, first, let me thank, thank you for um, having me. It was a, a, a pleasure, you know, the fact that you invited me on your beautiful show. This beautiful establishment I'm in. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Know, apparently it's your, your dad's place, so that's yeah. a beautiful space he has. Yes. With all his merch, that's dope. <laughs> so, you know, privilege in Brooklyn. Come check it out. Yes, I appreciate yeah. you for coming, though, for, for real. Like, nah, yeah, definitely. Um, I've been, I'm like a super, super, super huge fan of Ernie Legion. Like, you guys, nah, thank you, thank you, like, thank you. all jokes aside, like, just to give y'all y'all flowers, right? And I say y'all because I know you here, but you're a part of them and a team. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be who I am without y'all. No, like, I appreciate that. That's during the pandemic, I was yeah. reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but I needed more. And y'all was that more that I yeah. needed. I needed a representation of like people who look like me, people who came from, come from where I come from, and people that could understand and like really give the information. And I'm Digest really able to yeah. package the information that y'all give and pour it into my community. Like that's why I got my cousin here today, my, my best friend, my other cousin, that's because dope. like the goal that's is dope. to spread the word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Like I really, really, really appreciate y'all. That's why I go to every event, everything. <laughs> like Nah, yeah, you 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 you've been outside for a minute. Like that's why I said to your your dad, I'm like, yo, she's 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 on her way. She's like she, she's she's a star, right? You you did you did your job. She got <laughs> trying, it from here. Trying, trying, yeah, trying. She got it from here, but yeah, yeah. thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. But what would I tell my my younger self? Yes. The first thing I would tell tell myself is that my twenties mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. Those are the most important times of your life. Mm. Um People think that you can make the mistakes in your 20s, but in reality is, if you if you really buckle down, you stay focused at, to what you wanted to do in life, and I know it's hard to know what you want to do in life at 20, but you focused on something, just something. Mm -hmm. Because one, your information is retainable, it's more retainable when you're younger. Mm -hmm. You don't forget things like, as you get older, you forget everything. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're in your 20s, you, you, you remember everything, you got more energy, you're in better shape, you're in better health. So I was, if I could tell myself something, um, my younger self, I would tell, tell my younger self, focus and hustle in your 20s. Because after that, in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, you good, you don't have to do nothing. You, you, you got everything planned out. It's like my fiance. She became a millionaire at, at 29, mm -hmm. a multi-millionaire at 29. She ain't got to do nothing else for us. You know, she 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 gliding for the rest of her life if she wanted to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but she, but she had no life in her 20s. She ain't day, she ain't a boyfriend, nothing. She just focused on her craft mm. at, in her 20s. So that's what I would say. Focus on your craft in your 20s. All Don't right. make no mistake. So we we started a conversation early because that ties into some of my, comp, my questions that I was about to ask you, right? I think, like, how do you know 
Like when it's time to start a family? I think how I did it is like probably like an ideal situation because I didn't have a family when I wasn't financially stable. Mm -hmm. I was stable in my life. Um, I was in the most stable uh, situation in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say that that was the time. I mean, I think God put God puts things on your plate when you're ready to handle it, and that's in God's time. When you talk about kids, that's like out of your power. Like I, I didn't ask. Like not like I asked for a kid. I wanted a kid or planned a kid. God put a kid in my life, which I I'm I'm greatly um, appreciative for. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I don't know when you when it's time to start a, a family. But I will say God won't put nothing on your plate that you can't handle. So I mean, so I guess like the question is that I feel like a lot of times, I speak for myself, right? A lot of times, like I'm locked in, I'm focused on like what I want to do, but like, a, like I don't put in my mind like relationships right now or anything like that. But then sometimes I feel like like I don't see that in my future, but I don't not see it either, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know if that's a problem. Like I don't know if like maybe I should I need to open my mind. Like were you dating in your twenties or were you just so locked in in what you had to do? Well, I would say this, like, I think, I think you're, you're in a relationship with, with your craft. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're in a, that's your first relationship, right? And once you birth this and get to a, to a place where it's stable, I think that's going to be the next chapter in your life where you start maybe dating someone and get into a different relationship. But right now, this is your relationship. That so. was that's all I needed to hear in life. <laughs> that's all I needed to hear in life. All right, but yeah, so now when, when people are, you know, got it locked in with their craft, they ready to now go into the relationship aspect. What are some of the things that you looked for in a wife? Well, I need someone aligned with the things I want in life. Mm -hmm. I like, I need them to want like a, f a family values. Like, um, my fiance, she has si a siblings. Mm -hmm. Um, she, so she's very close to her sibling. She respects her mother. That's a very, that's a major thing. You know what I'm saying? Respect her parents. Um, like just, just those values first have to be first. Right. Mm -hmm. The second thing is like she has to have something going on. She has to be about something. Mm -hmm. She can't be like out here doing nothing with her life. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, um, I used to be like you had to have a degree, but that's not real. That's not that's not my reality anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't even have a degree. So, mm -hmm. um, but you got to you, Like I said, you have to be about something. You have to have something going for yourself. Um, you got to have some dreams and aspirations, and you got to want kids. So, wow. You got to and you got to have God in your life. God, it's so. perfect. Perfect. Well, it's a little off topic, but you know how small the world is? You know Brianna Baker. No. Y yes, you do. That's your fiance's line sister, Brianna Baker. Oh, Brianna Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brie, <laughs> like, I know it's Brie. Oh, Brie, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brie, Brie, yeah. Sorry, Brie. I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, she's one of the change leaders, the McDonald's change leaders. So that's how. She I'm... is. Y'all was on stage together. Yes. Well, no. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were. yeah. 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 yeah th this week. I mean, you famous. I mean, what you want me to do? Nah, not. Nah, I'm trying to get like y'all, though. I'm trying to get like y'all. In the process, in the process. On your way. Yes, that's the process, right? But now we want to talk about the business, right? Because you are the co-founder of Earn Your Leisure. Mm -hmm. You built that brand. You were behind the scenes, right? And I want to talk about, like, how do we, like, really develop a business and make it successful? Because, they, you know, they say that, like, a lot of businesses fail, mm -hmm. right? Or a lot of people aren't consist consistent enough to see their businesses actually become successful. So what was the, like, key things that you feel like Earn Your Leisure did to actually build a successful brand? Well, I think it first starts off with you have to be aligned with the brand, right? You have to really want to do what you're doing. Um, Ari Elysia wasn't our first our first brand. It wasn't mm -hmm. our first um, business. Uh, we failed at a few businesses before Ari Elysia. Mm -hmm. But then we started Ari Elysia, and um, I, I said this before, I said, but Troy is an uh, educator. Mm -hmm. Rashad is in, in finance. I was in media. We all took our, our, uh, our abilities, our, our strengths, put them together and you created Earn Your Leisure. So it was, we wasn't really working. We was doing things that we loved. And I will say like, if you're gonna do something, you have to love it. If you don't love what you're doing, I feel like you're wasting your time because eventually you're probably gonna end up failing because you don't love it. Mm -hmm. Like what you're doing right now, you had to set up cameras, you have to set up lights, you have to interview, prepare for the interview. Mm -hmm. It wasn't work to you probably. It was probably like second nature. You love yeah. doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you would keep doing it all night if you could. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like that and when you're in that position, it's it's that's our that's our success. That's the remedy. 
that we that's the um ingredients that we had. We we love doing we, every every person played a part, and the part they played, they love playing it. But think about sometimes like you can love doing something like I it, I'm really passionate about the mm -hmm. teaching financial literacy, helping like mm -hmm. my generation and stuff like that. But it's really sometimes days where I don't want to be bothered, days when I don't want to do something. So like. How did y'all surpass those days? You know, those tough days, those days when like y'all didn't want to show up, those days when you didn't want to be in the camera, those days when you didn't want to be behind the camera. Like, what do you do during those days? So I would say like, when we started, we had a vision. We had we had a we had a goal. We had an end goal in place mm -hmm. um, when we started um, our Legion. So we knew where we wanted to go, and obviously we've grown since then. But we had a we had we had one step that we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. And if you focus on that, on that, that one thing that you wanted to get to and achieve, um, like we wanted to be number one on the, on the business charts, right? Well, and we got that very early. We got that like night, I'm going to say like 19 weeks in. Wow. Congratulations. That's, yeah, that's, right? that's big. Yes. But, but that was like, that was a, a milestone in our, in our um, rollout. Like mm -hmm. that was in our pipeline. Mm -hmm. So I would say focus on that one, one thing you want to achieve and, when it's days when you look in the mirror and it's days you don't want to come to work and you don't want to do this or mm -hmm. do that, you gotta you gotta always remember that one thing that you really are doing this for. Mm -hmm. And like, I was doing this because my brothers wanted to do this podcast, so I was doing it for a whole different reason. Yeah. Now I got a whole nother reason. Like mm -hmm. that's why I got a whole nother like, um, like uh, thing because I have a kid now. Yeah. I just had a kid and like you know. And now he's my whole nother, mo he's a whole nother motivator. He just put another fire under me now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had the fire back then mm -hmm. for something, uh, totally other things. Mm -hmm. Now I got a kid. So now it's like a whole nother fire. So I'm, yeah. I'm on go. Yeah. So I guess my question is, how do y'all keep up in it? Like, like, what's the source? Like, I feel like, like, I watched y'all do Invest Fest 2022 mm -hmm. and then post y'all doing Invest Fest in London. Yeah. I watch y'all, like, it's just like, yeah, yeah. Keep up in it. Like, there's never, yeah. Never just let something just sit and and marinate. Like, and that's something that I noticed about y'all. Yeah, keep going up. up. Like, there's no limitations. Y'all don't put no cap at which I can do. Like, yeah. is that a mindset thing? Is that like a? Um, it's putting yourself around people that are high level people, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're when you're sitting down with a Robert F. Smith. Stop playing. Stop playing. You playing around too much. Like you wanna do something, you wanna make the money, you wanna you 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 wanna build wealth because it look cool, but you're not serious. Cause you know what I got. And I got something for you. The blueprint for investing, value one, created by me, Aliyah Dua. It gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started investing in the stock market. See, if you wanna really build wealth, you gotta put your money into things that's gonna work for you, right? Because the job money cool, but you wanna make the money work too. Right? So it's gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide, investing tools the apps to use, everything. And the best part is, I know you don't like to read, so I only made it 28 pages. That's it, right? 28 pages, and you getting yourself some, some wealth of knowledge. So make sure y'all tune in, get your copy today, and go to financialrevolution.com. Let's get it, y'all. Back to the episode. When it, it changes your mindset. Mm. You, um, like, mindset is important. Mindset can make or break you. And if you surround yourself by people that, are, that have a, a high-level mindset, it inspires you and, and puts you and makes you do want more and do more. Mm -hmm. And um and, and I think that's what it is. It's like um we didn't even think globally in the beginning. We just thought, you know, domestic, right? We was just trying to be the best in New York, then the best in um say the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the West Coast. It was a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Like it was a, it was it was one step at a time, you know? So I think um putting yourself in the room mm -hmm. with the with like-minded people mm -hmm. makes you think want more. One thing I, I feel like my peers run into a lot of times, like, one, you can get into the room, but how do you work the room? How do you work the room? Like, how do we approach somebody like yourself without being annoying or feeling like we asking for something or feeling like we need a handout? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do we work the room and network correctly, make those connections without, you know, overstepping boundaries? So this is one thing I could say. Um, Like, I could only think from experience. Mm -hmm. Um, The people that like that work that outside of our, 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 our friends and family, the people that work with Earn Your Leisure, they have been people that have added value mm. in some way. So um, our editor right now, right? He sent me like 15 clips free of our clips. He sent 15 clips of our clips. 
And they, the clips were so great that I had to hire him. Now he makes thousands of dollars a month editing for, for Earn Your Leisure mm. because he sent 15 free clips. Now, when you say work the room, I think it's the same exact thing. Like me, you got to understand I'm not really working rooms because I'm not the, the face, right? Mm -hmm. I stay in the back. I'm chilling and watching things and making sure everything's good. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing, though. If you're going to work a room, you got to add value. If I if I come up to a to a Michael or a Troy or a Rashad, I'm adding value. I'm not asking for help. I'm not this. I'm adding value. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this or, or I'm saying I could do this. I could do that. I see where the where gap is or you got to add value. Add value be a, 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 a solution to the problem. Mm. And if you if you can come to me and tell me a solution to a problem that we have, mm. then you you, sp you spike my interest. Mm. And once you spike my interest, now I want more. I want to know more. Okay. You know? Well, I'm about to use your advice right now, live in action. Okay. Right? And I've been trying to do this for a couple of years now uh -oh. when I first met y'all. <laughs> when I first met y'all, but I'm going to shoot my shot, right? So one, I'm going to ask y'all, how many people, what's your... What's your stats when it comes to like ages? Like who's who's your number one audience in ages? Ages. It's ages. 20, 24 to like forty five. So where's Gen Z? So why can't I be that face for Gen Z? I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, I, you de you definitely got the follow. Like, I've, I've been trying to be that face for Gen Z because I think that like we need to tap in with the information, and I feel like. Mm -hmm. Y'all got the swag, y'all got the coolness, but it's still at the end of the day like that age gap. But me being our face, it yeah. breaks away the age gap. And also delivering information to be like, y'all, like, That's a fact. like I, you don't know how many people I say, yo, y'all need to watch Earn Your, Le Earn Your Leisure. Y'all need to watch Market Monday. You, you know what it is? To... I think you have to do it in a, in a, a very tasteful way. It's like mm -hmm. these, even the music artists that's out today, mm -hmm. I have no clue who they are. Like, even like this guy, um, what is his name? Little Easy Vert or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, my nephew listens to him. And he's, I think, he's like 20, 20, He's twenty years old, and it's it's just that like I'm so I'm so disconnected. I cannot talk to a person that likes those people, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm so disconnected. No shot to them, mm -hmm. like to those artists and them, but I'm so disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. I don't. I can't speak for Troy and Rashad, but I'm totally disconnected. Um, I barely listen to music. But what I'm saying is that when you do, we delivered the the um, information in hoodies and. Mm -hmm we del delivered it digestible mm -hmm. to our age, mm -hmm. right? Like they were ready for that information. Now you have to make it in a way where uh, you have to deliver the information how a little Uzi Vert no, definitely. is delivering the information. Definitely. Definitely. So if you can kind of like, cause it's like rock star vibes now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if you can kind of deliver that information in yeah. that type of concept, financial literacy information, it changes. You can't deliver like Troy and Rashad. I don't. Like, you yeah. can't deliver mm -hmm. like EYL. It does, mm -hmm. It's not gonna work. Yeah. Because they're not listening to it. That's why yeah. that's not our that's yep. not our um audience. Yep. That's not our avatar. But if you can deliver the information and connect it to what's going on right now, mm -hmm. I think I think we would automatically pick you up. Yes. I feel like that's some of the things in the work that I've been doing, and that's why I get like the respect that I get from my generation because I'm like in the mix, but also like I'm out the mix. So it's like it's like, wow, like, Aaliyah, you're at the parties with us and, like, mm -hmm. you know, you're in college with us, y'all. Yeah, you we, you mixing and mingling with us. But they also smart enough and giving us information that, like, we see value in, right? And then you're mm -hmm. not making it super hard. You're making it cool. Now, like, I want to be a part of what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? So similar to, like, what y'all are doing with, you know, the uh, like a little older generation, but I'm making it cool for my generation because I understand it. I understand yeah, the little exactly. movies. I understand why we, like, artists like Sexy Red and things like that, right? I don't understand that. No shot at her, but I just don't understand it. It's more so that's the stuff that- Can you talk to me about that? Let, <laughs> let's stop the, let's <laughs> let's stop for a second. Can you break this down? Like, cause I'm not, again, I'm not connected and there's no shot at Sexy Red, but the things she say in her songs, is that okay? Like, is that is that is that where our generation is going? I think that's where we're going, but I'm gonna tell you why. Why? I feel like, your generation was led a certain way because I grew up on Jay Z, uh, Nas, and different things like that. Mm -hmm. Y'all were led a certain way. That was what was pushed towards y'all. Okay. My generation was pushed towards us are the low Uzis, the sexy reds, and things like that. And that's where all the money is going to. And when we see, oh, that's where all the money is going to. We are so far gone where we don't know how to decipher like what's good or what's not. And even if we do know how to say, all right, sexy reds not good. At the end of the day, like my generation. We're so much of like 
followers and following trends. That's just like, if that's what's popping right now, that's what's popping right now. Then if everybody says, oh, I hate Sexy Red, everybody's going to hate Sexy Red. Like, it's no, it's like nobody has a mind of their own no more. And I feel like because y'all were, y'all had life before social media, but grew up where social media was like becoming a thing. The internet was becoming that's a thing. A tr- we fact. were just pu- like pushed to Everybody can media. be a star now. You get what I'm saying? So I think like that was, that's like the biggest problem here. Like, but, but see, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, we got to get to this thing. Um, and I don't even know her mental space, right? I don't mm. even know. She might be um, just doing this as an act mm. um, because she wants attention mm. and she's she wanted to, you know, become a celebrity and mm. it's working. Yeah. If it's an act, it might be her. I personally don't know. Yeah. And I, I don't, I never really listen to her songs. I just hear like, you know, certain things that come across my timeline. But I think um, it's misguiding the youth and I think our youth is in trouble. We are. What if something like if the thing she say is is she's like the most popular artist I think right now. Yes. And if that's the most popular artist right now, I I'm I'm worried about my son. Yes, but the problem is we don't have nobody that challenges it, and that's why, why not. But that's what I do, right? So do you like challenge her? no on my platform. Like you can you ask my friend. You listen to sexy rap. I don't listen to sexy rap, but why I, not? I okay. This is what I do. All right. I listen to music and certain things just so I know what's going on. Like I don't want to be oblivious because then it's hard for me to relate, right? So I listen to it. I have my thoughts, and then I go speak on it, and I speak on why why we shouldn't do certain things, why we shouldn't listen to certain things, and then I've come with facts. I'm like y'all, like they're putting this in our face because they want us to do this. They're putting this in our face because Ooh. I feel like the. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like talk your shit. La- I feel like labels are oh, labels. Are, are funding. Okay, right. If we want to be, be, don't if, be uh, if we want to be honest here, I feel like the Jews run everything, and they are funding these labels. They are funding politicians. They are mm-hmm. funding certain people to place certain plants, like in it's our the narrative. They're trying to create their own narrative exactly. of us. Exactly, and I think they use social media. Mm-hmm. They use the internet. They use TikTok. They use all these different platforms where mm-hmm. they know that we are because now they know it's easier to inspire us and it's, it's more of us than y'all to to spread the word. And then they know that, like, at the end of the day, they put in money behind, behind it. Nothing's going to beat the money that's behind it, right? So it's like even if I come speak, it's not going to, like, outwork the money that's behind people like Sexy Red. You got what I'm saying? The money that's behind all these different artists, right? And they're, they're targeting our young women. They're targeting our young men and they're doing it and they're doing it so well to the point where like we don't even notice it's a problem anymore. I feel like I mean, mm-hmm. maybe I'm mean, well, well, I guess and so when you say we as, as in age, my as in my yeah, generation. Yeah. And even if we know it's a problem, it's just like a I right, but that's just what we're doing now. Yeah. Like sometimes like sometimes I'm uncomfortable at parties because I'm just like, like the fact that it's like three hundred people in here and y'all all saying mm. this. They at, one, the at, at one point, at one wow, part of the crazy. song, like they singing it, the songs, and yeah, all that? Wow. like like it bothers me sometimes, and it's just like. Do you think that's really her, or you think it's a gimmick? So I have different conversations. Some people think that, mm-hmm. like for example, like City Girls, Sexy Red, different things like that. They feel like she's just being an artist for the people that are out there that already like her. Okay, that's what they think. And my thing is, I feel like there are people out there like her because of artists like her, if that makes sense. Like, they're influenced. Like, yeah. I was just on somebody I know Instagram page, and I'm looking at how, like, I can see how she's influenced by, like, the City Girls. Versus if you look on my Instagram page, you can see how I'm influenced by, like, Ernie Ernie Elijah. Elijah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like we're all influenced and inspired by somebody, and we do things based on those people. But it's just, like, who are you inspired by? But imagine, imagine this, right? Imagine taking, li- listen to her content and how she delivers the content. Imagine this. Imagine if you you started to make content like her, see how she makes the content. Um, and it might just not be you. It might be somebody you produce, but, um, and get out there and start giving more information or med- more education to certain things in our life. Like, but you have to deliver it the way she mm. delivers it. Mm. Right now, she has your ear. Mm. The, the, the goal is, these brands out here in this world want you want the the people's ear. Yeah. And um they'll they'll pay top dollar to have 
the people's air. Mm -hmm. Like I did a clip the other day and um, it was about how we were on Bloomberg in the morning mm -hmm. and in and, 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 and the evening we was, we was on um, um, Dykeman playing ball. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our basketball team, right? Yeah. So we, we connected to the whole, the whole, yeah. the whole at atmosphere, right? The whole Dasper, whatever, it's, whatever it is, right? <laughs> We're connected to the whole entire circulation of, of, of everything. And we got the people, we got the brands, we got the corporate, we got everything. We can, we can go into every single room. And I think, and this is our, our age gap, whatever, like our avatar. Mm -hmm. Now you need to take that with your avatar, which is the people that listen to Sexy Right, and deliver the information, how she delivers her information, but deliver the different information, not whatever she says in her songs, which I don't know. X, X, X. I don't know. Maybe I gotta figure out how to say "sick your dreads, sick your dreads" in financial literacy. I don't know. You, you can do that <laughs> like, though. Sound like that. You can do it. Yeah. You can do, or you can get somebody to do it. Yeah. Produce it. Yeah. Maybe that because I don't yeah. know how comfortable I feel doing that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's why I said it might not be your lane, but mm -hmm. you can get someone else yeah. to deliver some insight and better information. Yeah. Because she got the she got a great you know brand because mm -hmm. she's got your attention. Mm -hmm. You just have to change the change change the message. Yeah, I don't know. I pray for my generation every day, man. You should. <laughs> I pray. Facts. I pray for us because I feel like our role models these days are so off, and like because there's so many of them, we don't know that it's off. Yeah. But you know. Yo, yeah. listen. It is what it is. You know, you gotta yeah. just take one day at a time, and pray, and you know, and know Jesus is coming. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> nah, Jesus is coming. It's crazy. But. To speak to your point where you said, like, you know, Earn Your Legion was able to get, like, the corporate audience, uh, the, the audience of the people. Like, how are y'all able to get audience from different avenues, right? Like, how do, how do you do that as a business? Because I think sometimes a lot, like, businesses are able to get audience from one stream, but, like, how do I spread that now? Well, we, we, we've been professionals from day one. Like, like I said, Troy's an educator. Rashad is in finance, so he has he's corporate America. Like, so we had that, but we all come from you know we come from like the cloth. We come mm -hmm. from like hip hop. We come from we come from that culture where you know we dress in good and and we listen to the hip hop, and so we have that connection too. We play in ball, you know what I'm saying. So all those connections were still there, mm -hmm. but then you have to grow up, right? You have to get a job. You have to go to whatever, whatever. And that's what we that's what we also did too. So we had a piece of each world. What we did was just combined it. Mm -hmm. But we knew that we had to get your attention. And how we got your attention was putting hoodies on and talking about and talking about financial literacy in the same uh, language that you would talk with hip hop, connecting it to hip hop, connecting like Fifty Cent um, made eighty million dollars with doing this water deal. But how we how you say it and how you know. But now you're like, wait, he made $80 million off the vitamin water? What? Yeah. And, you know, it's just, but you wouldn't know if, you know, if you don't, if you don't, you know, say it the way we say it. So we got your attention. So, and that's what it is. And that's what I'm telling you to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take your advice. So have you ever ran like ads or anything like that? Or we, we ran, we ran a couple ads for a couple of events like mm -hmm. InvestFest. When you get, when you're trying to get 20,000 people, mm -hmm. um, you got to run a couple of ads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Uh, you know, we're not big on ads. Um, the way you run ads is you got you got to create the content, and you can't just run ads on anything. You can't you can't just take this right. You t you say this, and you put a hundred uh, put a ten thousand dollars behind this and say I want this to sell. Mm -hmm. you, it, that's not how you run ads. Yeah, you have to tell a story. When you're telling a story, like um, I just posted a flyer uh, um, a couple of days ago about an event I'm about to go to. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say, yo, um, come out to this to this event uh, and, and check me out. Da, da, da. No, I posted it. I made a story about it. Yeah. Like, it, it's a story behind it. Hey, um, I said, like, you know, this is, my, I, I've been I've been making content for about four or five months, and I finally got a booking to come speak at an event. Da, da, da. You know, it was a story. It was a lead up yeah. to, like, this is a lead up. It's It's got, like, 700 likes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I told a story. Yeah, if I'd intriguing. have just said, come yeah. check me out, da, 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 it wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I made it a story and I connected it to my reality, it, it hit people differently. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to put money behind that post, right? If I wanted, that, that, that's an event post. That's a post that I want to put ad, um, money behind. Yeah. If I put money behind that, 
that makes sense. Yeah. But you have to make sense with your um, which with, with the money when you put money behind something, because you don't want to put money behind something and it, it's just it it doesn't make yeah make it doesn't anything. yeah. So InvestFest, we're gonna talk about InvestFest, right? Mm -hmm. What was the first goal with InvestFest? Because I went the very first year, I didn't go the second year, but I went the third year, mm -hmm. and just the growth from the first year. <laughs> you went like, from first to third. That's like, crazy. I was like. That's a big difference. Like, just the growth in itself. Like, I'm just like, I was just in awe. Like, what was the initial goal? Initial. I mean, we had six weeks to uh, plan. Mm. Rashad had us in a, um, at 2 a.m., like 2.30 a.m. Uh, like, yo, I got an idea. And he's good for that. He he has ideas all the time. He just, you know. And this is like 2.30 in the morning. He probably couldn't sleep. <laughs> it's COVID. I think it's around COVID. Like, yeah. you know, we inside. So, so he said, I got an idea. I'm 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 seeing conferences, I'm seeing summits. We need a festival for investing. Mm -hmm. And then we we took like two or three days to get a name, made sure the name wasn't taken or copyright or trademark. And the goal was just to make the event happen. Mm -hmm. That was the eventual goal. Just make just make mm -hmm. it happen. We had six weeks to do it. And we did it in six weeks and we pulled it off and had like four thousand people there. So how did that you, was the goal, just to make it happen. So I'm pretty sure during that time you were still doing interviews, still on a road, still you know networking with people. How did you know that like I, right, I want this idea to happen within the next six weeks? How do you know like I right, let's just wait till next year? Let's just you know you know what I'm saying like how do you know to when you get an idea? This is the idea that I need to act on right then and there. Well, I think anything that you want to do, if you if you procrastinate, it's never gonna happen, and you got to do it now. You gotta make it happen. Um, Even when you're busy? There's no such thing as being busy. Mm -hmm. You gotta break it down and, and take step by step, right? That's the problem. Like if I had like if I had a bunch of things on my plate and I'm thinking about I have a bunch of things on my plate, then I'm never gonna get I'm not actually gonna get nothing done. Mm -hmm. But if I have a bunch of things on my plate and I say I'm gonna take care of this right now, tomorrow I'm gonna take care of this, the next day I'm gonna take care of this, and then you, you break it down one yeah. step at a time. Yeah. And then you don't you don't you don't um get discouraged. And it, it's easier to, to, to process things and to, to get things completed. But if you look at everything at once, you'll, no, you'll never get nothing completed. Yeah, that's a fact, that's a fact. I think sometimes I do that, like just to be honest, like sometimes I'll get overwhelmed in my mind of all the different things that I'm doing. And then because I'm learning a lot of new things and mm -hmm. like things are not coming to me just easy, yeah. the learning process takes a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? Cause now it's like, I'm not just doing something in my sleep. Like, no, I gotta figure these cameras out. I gotta figure this mic out how to work this. So it's like yeah. the thought process of all of that makes me feel like I got to just dedicate all my time to one thing, but I got to just figure Just take it out. one thing yeah. at a time. Mm -hmm. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just take one thing at a time. If you got to do the cameras, you just do the cameras. Want to do lighting, you do lighting. Yeah. If you got to do sound, do sound. Yeah. Just one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. Yes. And since we're talking about equipment now, I want to get to podcasting, right? So you've been behind the scenes with the podcast. And so that means you know all the good things that you need when it comes to building your podcast and things like that. So for someone like myself who is like just now getting started with the buying equipment, things like that, what are the like best starter pack, like the starter pack for podcasting? Like when I say I mean, I look like you got it. I mean, if the starter pack, if you want to say starter pack, mm -hmm. you got some lights, mm -hmm. you got your, your cameras is your iPhones. That's a great camera. Mm -hmm. And you got some short mics, so mm -hmm. I mean, you really and you then you got the uh, Zoom recorder, mm -hmm. so you you have a great starter pack. Thank you. Um, the next level would be you know getting like uh, some Sony camera, like the Sony those Sony um FX threes. Okay, because I didn't know what camera to get. I was just online. Yeah, Sony the so like I, if I knew what I knew today, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have went to the red. I'd have went to the Sony um, it's an FX three and an FX thirty. How much are those cameras? The FX30 is, I get them mixed up, but the F, whatever one. One is 5,000, oh no, 3,500, and another is like 1,200. It's on a sale right now. Oh, okay. It's $1,200. It's an amazing camera. Maybe, maybe I got it's it's a already. better camera than a lot of these cameras. Yeah, I heard that. The so, Sony FX3, the $1,200 one. Yep. <laughs> yes. And FX30. So yeah. when I go to the high level, mm -hmm. that's a really great camera. Mm -hmm. But... The thing about it is, so in the FX, one of them, FX30, FX31, they might even both, I'm not sure, but they're qualified for Netflix. That's mm. really important too. That's the thing, when I got the cameras, the, when I got the cameras, the um, the, the Reds, mm. I said, let me get the least expensive camera that Netflix is going to accept. Mm. 
Wow. Because at one point before I bought the cameras, I realized that we were making history. Yeah. Right. So this is going to be told in a documentary style um, setting. So now, like, y'all going to have footage that y'all can put on platforms like Netflix. And Correct. Y'all, y'all don't have to so worry about So that's what that. I was thinking about when wow. I got the that's camera. Very so futuristic. Yeah. So I was like, wow. this is like, we're going to be taught in, in textbooks and this is going to be told. This is, we're making history. We're literally making history. Yeah, I are. So, um, you know, I was like, it has to be recorded on a, on, on cameras that studios like Netflix is going to accept. Wow. So how did you, you just looked up like what type of cameras Netflix is? Yeah, you could, you could just look what, what cam, and it changes all, it changes all time. Yeah. Like those Sony FX wasn't on there. If they, if they were, they were on there, I would have probably got those. Because yeah. those are a little cheaper. Mm-hmm. Especially if that $1,500 one um, Sony camera's on there, mm-hmm. that, and that camera's amazing. You know, a lot of times when you get these cameras, it's not really the camera; it's about the lens that you have. Does it? Does, does the Sony one? Come well, first is lighting. Lighting. Okay, lighting so is the most lights, important. Are my lights good right now? Um, what would, what would you change about my, job. What they're, would you change about my lights? Like, what can I add? Well, what can well, I so so those lights have no softener in it, right? So what it's really hard. So you put like a um, a, they usually have a soft box. This is so skinny. You put like a you'll put like a a a a, 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 a foil a, a, a like a, a foil over it. Oh, you talking about that black? It. Yeah, it's that. a soft box. So okay. those lights are really hard. Okay. So But I can adjust it though. Yeah, the but body. they're still coming from a hard you have to oh. soften it. You okay. have to put a filter in place to soften the light. Oh, okay. Um so um that's the first thing. So I would get um Aperture makes some good light. They make some really great lights actually. Aperture. What's yeah. Aperture? Aperture's a company of okay. of a light. Aperture. Okay. Aperture, yep. Aperture. So mm-hmm. I would I would you could do to start off, you could do like a um I think it's like a one hundred X. Okay, they're really good. Or two hundred X. Two hundred X. They're really good. Okay. You want to go to the next level is three hundred three hundred D. Okay. And then the next level is six hundred D. That's okay. when you you got some shit. You, Every, you pop it. Everything good. Okay. Yep. But those are the first things. All right. And now in terms of cameras, you feel you said the The Sony, lenses. The lenses? You go to you go to Sigma Art lenses. Sigma Art Lenses. Sigma Art Lenses. I don't know they make what lenses. you're talking about, but I'm going to look it up. They make, they make lenses right. for every single type of camera. Right. Um, if, you can, if you can stretch it, you get the 24 to 70 lens on all three lenses if mm-hmm. you have three cameras. And that can kind of, that, that focal length could, could, could uh, uh, capture m- mostly every single angle, mm-hmm. the 24 to 70. Mm-hmm. And those are some great lenses where, like, a t- like for instance, a 24 to 70 is like $1,200 for Sigma. Okay. Art. But if you get a Canon lens, it's like 2500. Yeah. But the Sigma's probably better, better than the Canon. Cheaper. And cheaper. Okay. And in terms of audio, what are You have some great mics. Great. Okay. Are these like the basics or like No, no, no. These ain't basics. Okay. The Pod so the Pod mics would be the basics. So what would be The Rode Pod mic. Rode Pod mic. That's the ones that you That's $100. No, it's $100. 100. This is like $249, right? Yeah. So well, you, know you would yourself. go <laughs> Yeah, this is the yeah, I live this shit. This is the second. I would say this is the middle. Okay, middle. And the third highest would be the SB. Um, the short seven. SB. Yeah, yep. those are like four hundred dollars a piece. Correct. Exactly. That's well, what we're working towards. So That's it's three levels. Mm-hmm. You can start with the pod mics, mm-hmm. which is cool too. They're good. They get the problem is they take they listen they hear the sound um around also. Yeah. These are these are starting the, the the dynamics. So it's taking just the sound in front of it. Mm-hmm. So um you know. This this is actually really good, mm-hmm. um, but if you want to get a little bit better, a little finer in audio, you go yeah. to the next one. So my so I'm on a Revolt Network now, so I'm just like congratulations. Don't let that. that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heard you won a competition. And yeah, all that. yeah, I did. Yeah. How'd you do that? So basically, actually, I saw it on. I was going to Revolt World, and I saw it on like they site or something like that, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh shoot, let me like you know try to get in. And basically, you had to send in a pitch deck, and then your pitch deck had to get selected. And then okay. I had to compete at Revolt World against four other podcasts. Okay. And once I competed, I used, like, my value add in the space. Like, I was the youngest person there. Okay. And also, like, their whole thing was, like, being original, right? And how is your podcast original? And, you know, I'm speaking to a whole audience that, like, a lot of people are trying to get in tune with, but they have a hard time getting in tune with. And then it's just, like, I am that audience. Yeah. So it was just, like, that competition level was that. And then I also gave, like, the judges gifts and stuff. Like, I was just really thinking out the box. Um, and I was able to, you know, finesse my way into winning. So it was God, though, most importantly. Though. That's it was God. Yeah. That's but, dope. yeah. So Congratulations. That's yeah, dope. I appreciate that. Revolt, yeah. Revolt War was pop. It was yeah, nice. It, it was it dope. Was nice. It Did was Did you nice. see Laura London? I didn't see Lauren London. I'm so because oh, it was at the it was during the same like it was a lot going on. She gave a really good interview. Yeah. You could tell it. 
she hasn't been given interviews and she's still like grieving. Yeah, that yeah. It, 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 it was amazing. Yeah. They it just I think it just came out. Yeah, too. yeah, y'all yeah, dropped it on your Yeah, did, did yeah. you watch it? Not yet. You should. Not you yet. Should. I will it watch good. it. Yes. Should. I was watching your interview with um Sphinx. That's it. Oh, you did. Yeah, I was that interview's on fire yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah, I was watching it. Sphinx got me on yeah. fire. Yeah. Again. He, he lit me up again. Yeah, I was watching interview with Sphinx. Did you watch the whole interview? I finished halfway, but I was so so. I, was, I didn't know that you were. What Italian. did you take? I didn't know that you were Italian. Italian. Yeah, I'm black and Italian. Yeah, I didn't know that. But let me ask you. So from the Sphinx interview, because. You know, people be sending me stuff. They've been killing me and stuff mm-hmm. about. They was killing me. A fact that I was talking about, uh, like the plane thing, and I'm, I, I was the dumbest person in the world. Mm-hmm. You know? But you know, I don't really look at comments. I don't, I don't worry about what people negative saying. I'm not. I don't have anything negative saying about you. Mm-hmm. I love you. Thank <laughs> you. But what I was saying was, what did you take from whatever you've seen so far? What did you take from it? First part, I did watch the part about the plane and the VIP. I was just telling my friend, we got to try that. Like $300, that's Delta VIP. That's calm. Like, that's, I mean, I thought it was great. Yeah. I, Some I would people try didn't think it was too And great. I feel like sometimes you got to put yourself in certain situations that your future self would want. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's a calm way to spend $300 to, you know, get a lifestyle that you want to have. Right. So forget what the haters are saying. But most importantly, though, like I feel like within like all the interviews that you've been doing, like the common message here is really like show up for yourself even when like you gotta you gotta dream big one and show up for yourself even when like you're just doing the work like the like the like the you know the end goal you know what i'm saying like yeah. the end goal is all right we want to be the number one podcast keep showing up be consistent keep mm-hmm. doing the work that gets you there because once you stop doing the work like it's clip <laughs> like you'll never be able to hit that goal and i think like that's the most common message that all millionaires, all entrepreneurs, all people that successful have. And I think like most people just aren't disciplined enough to see things through and do things every day. Yeah. Continue to do things to see things actually fall through. No, it's true. And, yeah. And I feel it's like true. that's like that's like the most important thing. So like right now I feel like I'm consistent at my highest level. That's and dope. I feel like that's why I've been able to get some of the things that so success takes consistency. Yeah. And discipline. A lot of discipline. Like you're gonna have to sacrifice and take away some things to get what you want let me ask you how how does your friend friend relationship um been because maybe your friends aren't on the same level like they're not thinking about what you're thinking how's that been going i feel like i've been cut a lot of my friends off that were like you did uh, like not necessarily let me tell you the truth i didn't have to do the cutting off some people just start like walking away just because like you, uh... they you know what i'm saying they see that i'm operating here and they're not there yet or like the conversation changes like, I promise y'all, once I started watching, like, during a pandemic, once I started watching Earn Your Leisure, what, like, my friend always say, like, it always goes back to Earn Le- Like, I bring y'all up every day, in every That's conversation, dope. you know what I'm saying? That's dope. And it's because, like, it. when you're listening to certain things, when you're reading certain information, the conversations and the things that you, the dialogue you have changes. Yeah. The things that you desire to talk about changes. Like, if I just heard you teach me how to make a million dollars podcasting, I'm not gonna want to talk you. about. I can teach you. <laughs> it's not hard. I'm not gonna want to talk about something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I want to talk about stuff that is pushing me forward, and I think yeah. like you know people start to just gradually just. You hear that, Jamal and Tawan? You hear that? <laughs> we gotta change the conversation, or you know, we got it. We gotta change the conversation. No, that's what it is, and I think the people that now start to come around and hang around you is people that you have those developing conversations with people that you're growing with people yeah. that you know see something in you but they're pouring into you y'all pointing to each other and i think like that's what i've been around lately like you know that's dope yeah. you got you got to um you you mindset it goes back to mindset um that plane thing i didn't i can't unsee what happened with that plane mm-hmm. like i drove up to the plane and I walked on in the plane. I didn't go to TSA or nothing. I can't unsee that. Yeah. So now when I see that, it inspires me. Yeah. When I see a friend get a big house, it inspires me. When I f- see a friend get a nice car, it inspires me. The problem is in our mind where we, where we come from is um, we we're supposed to hate on them and not you know I, you ain't deserve that. You can't get like you hate you stealing you cr- selling mm-hmm. drugs. Remember, it, well you're a little younger, but anybody that had a nice car, a nice nice jewelry or anything back in the day. They were selling drugs right. automatically. Yeah. Now we entrepreneurs. We businessmen. Yeah. I remember one time, like, so I used to travel weekly to go from, like, my school to come back to New York to teach, like, financial literacy classes mm-hmm. in school. 
And the guy at the airport at TSA will always see me at night. He was like, you always come through here at night. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Selling drugs? And I'm like, why do I have to be selling drugs? Why why can't I just be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Why can't I be a business person? You know? And that really made him feel away because it was like, now he had to look at himself to think like, why would I want to ask a question like that? You know what I'm saying? Because it goes back to him. That's not about you. It's about mm -hmm. him. He grew up in those environments, in those toxic environments that all he's seen was if a, somebody is traveling at nighttime or somebody's doing this and, and, they're, and they're of color, they're probably selling selling yeah. drugs or something. So that's that's his own insecurities and his toxicity that he has to go through. Yeah. Don't take a, don't take offense to oh, that. No, how that's why when people talk bad about me, I don't take offense to it. It's about them. It's not yeah. about me. People be projecting like. I'm in my happiest place I've ever been in my life. How did you get there? <laughs> having a son. Oh. He like I look like I be having like people get me mad and stuff like that. And so I said, let me go see Leslie. Let me go look at him real quick. He goes and smiles at me. I'm like, I'm good. I got I got the best life in the world. I got a beautiful fiance, a beautiful a beautiful son, a beautiful home. I'm I'm getting healthy. I'm down 70 pounds. Congratulations. On Thank that. you. Congratulations. You can't on that. you can't you know what I'm saying? Like so I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm good. Yeah. So you feel like when people feel good about themselves, everything else Everything don't else matter. You can't, you can't like, bother me. Mm -hmm. You ain't getting mine. You can't. You, the only person that can bother me is probably my fiance. That's the only person <laughs> that can get on my nerves. So, all right, now that we're back to the fiance thing, I do have one other question. What are some traits that you look for in a good woman? Well, I'm going to just say her. I mean, you know, she, she's educated. She's uh, she's about her um, her craft. Like, she's a trader. Um, she loves what she does. She's a loving person. Um, she's respectful. Uh, she's well spoken. She got a nice body. She a beautiful face. I mean, you ask me, I'm gonna tell you. Um, so did you know, like run down on her. Like, how did that? How did she that knows happen? what she. This is important too. She knows what a successful relationship looks like because her mm. parents been married for like 50 years. Mm. So, so that's, important. that's important. That's very mm. important because I don't know what a successful relationship looks like, right? Because my parents that were never together when I was. You know what I'm saying? So. I, you know, I only know, like, you know, from my brother, my brother is like, you know, they, they have their relationships, but they, you know, I wasn't really in their relationships. Mm. I didn't grow up in a successful relationship. Mm. Their relationships were more outside the house, mm. but she was living inside of a successful relationship. So it's a part of her, 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 her call, claw. Yeah. But what was that question you asked? You just asked a question. I forgot that question, but I have a better question. Oh man. Right. Would, would you date people outside of well when uh, you your your fiance yeah, yeah, yeah you're married my, 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 <laughs> sorry my, my, my but what do you feel like two. no 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 do you feel like it's okay to date people outside of your career and the reason why i'm asking you so many relationship yeah. questions i mean she's out she's out my career but is he really because she's still an entrepreneur you're an entrepreneur i'm saying but she she's in a total different world like trading world like i go to her events and i don't connect i can't really i don't understand nothing they talk i'm not a trader Mm. I'm an investor. Mm. I'm not a trader. Like traders are t totally like their minds are so like fast paced and like it's totally different in my like mm. that's a to she has like her world is totally different from Ernie Lee's world. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we don't even teach trading. We teach investing, long term investing. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking so many relationship questions is because I feel like at the age level I'm in right now, it's just like. You looking for somebody, huh? You trying to get no, it. no, 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 you, no, you, no, you, no, no. You missing the, you missing the, you, you, no, you, you no. forgetting. This is your relationship right no, here. No, no, no. This is your relationship. I'm gonna tell you why. Uh oh. Because in a lot of rooms that I'm in, we could talk about our careers all day, but it, the conversation always goes back to relationships. I never, I don't know why. And then we were just talking about it, and we we're saying like maybe that's because like we understand our careers. Like I understand like I'm gonna go look at these videos, edit these videos, go figure out the cameras. But then it's just like a, we don't understand the relationship part. And then when you really think about it, there's no, like, unless you see it in your household, which a lot of black families don't, mm -hmm. you don't really have no guidance besides what you hear in music. And then you already know what we hear in music is not positive. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, who do we go to? And then now we look up to people like you who are some of my favorite entrepreneurs that's married. Look up to people like Troy that's married. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because like, that's just the, even though y'all in a whole nother space, that's the role that y'all play at the end yeah. of the day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because we see y'all in spaces that we want to be in, people that we want to be like in the future, and have a family as well. Well, well what was your last relationship? Oh. <laughs> I put you on the spot. This is federal. 
This is federal. <laughs> oh. You ain't got to answer it, but what um, I was, I mean. Like if, college, I guess. I just graduated in May, though. Congratulations. Thank you. What school you graduated from? Virginia State University. Wow. That's a really good school. You know about BSU? That's great. Because people be saying that. That's a really good school. Thank you. So, so when you just graduated, so that did that relationship just end, or are you still kind of like dingling? <laughs> Oh, oh, is she the one you was in a relationship with? No. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no, um, no. What's good, y'all? Are y'all having a hard time starting conversations in large rooms? Do you need to find more effective ways to draw attention to yourself without wearing a fancy outfit? I figured out a hack. You need some financial revolution merch. Everything is a staple piece that represents black wealth. You are what you wear, so make sure you join the rest of the billionaires and get some FR merch. We have hoodies, sweatsuits, t-shirts, and much more. Make sure you visit www.financialrevolution.com and use code PODCAST for a special 10% off. Again, go to www.financialrevolution.com and use code PODCAST for a special 10% off. Let's get it, y'all. Pretty only a few months ago. Yeah, but we, we were still cool, but you know, like, you know. But don't you think that, like, if the relationship couldn't last, if if she felt like she needed a college experience, college experience, that means that you wasn't enough for her and, and mm. vice versa, right? So that relationship really is like she didn't value your worth. And a year like a year or two from now, she's gonna be like, damn, I fucked up. Cause they think the grass is green on the other side. But you're obviously open to a relationship. I will say this. You have to be with someone that respects what you do. Mm. That's really important because you're, this is your baby too. Mm. And this is going to require a lot of time from you. And don't let the person that you're dating take away from your greatness mm. because you're going to resent them. And if you resent someone, it's not going to, it's going to, it's going to form toxicity in you. you and that's going to come out of you mm. in that relationship. So no, whatever you do, don't let them take away your your your, your greatness, your baby. Yeah. Because that definitely happened to me when I was taking pictures. Mm. So that's all I would say. So the next person you meet, because that I wouldn't even give that a time time place, because they oh. they felt like they felt like uh, running around school. They needed that experience, and you wasn't enough. My so. friend telling you don't say no more. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna forget about that. <laughs> we, we over that next chapter. Next chapter. We on the next chapter. I'm sorry. You, you you lost. It's over. You're done. You're finito. But you can edit this out if you wanted to. You shouldn't, cause she gotta know she's done. <laughs> but yeah, we done with her. We done with her. Yeah. But um, but what I was saying was that just you know, make make sure whoever you deal with respects what you're doing. Mm -hmm. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. But don't take that out. <laughs> we not going. In we're not gonna get no more to the to the relationship see that's how that's how you effectively avoid all relationships you go into their relationship <laughs> that's no one-on-one -on -one interviewing <laughs> facts i need a moment <laughs> so i'm right. getting i'm getting good at this i'm so weak okay that was lovely advice that's all i needed to hear in life mm -hmm. um my friends are shaking their <laughs> You're shaking your head, but um, we're about to get your friend on this pod podcast because she 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 got a lot of words, a lot of stuff to say outside the camera. You need to get in front of the camera. If you got something to say, say it. What you got to say? <laughs> All right, but back to the back to the podcasting, right? Mm -hmm. So you say you can teach me how to make a million dollar podcast. What 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 do I need to do? What's the steps? Like, All right, I, so we're gonna we're gonna bring I, it down as fast as possible. How can I? I'm actually like. How can I make the best use out of this revolt like situation? So you're on revolt network, so I don't really know the limits and things that you can so do. So right now we're contracting the deal. The way the deal is work looking like is it's supposed to be like I'm on their audio and they're gonna monetize it. So they're gonna put ads and I want a minimum end, they have to give me oh, I don't wanna say my numbers, but like Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's monetization. So, so it's different. Everything. You can't do you. You are they basically are are are, are um are selling ads on your your thing. Yeah. You come on the network and they're they're gonna basically monetize your thing. So yes. 
you are a little different. You're in a different situation. Mm -hmm. Most people are not fortunate where they're going to go into a situation and have pe have a company monetize your podcast. Yes. So you'll be making money from day one. It hasn't released yet? Well, I have episodes before I did the No, it hasn't released on Revolt. No, not yet. So you haven't even... So, But, but your first episode on Revolt is going to make a dollar. Yes. Yeah. That's the difference. That doesn't... That's not normal. Yes, it's not. So let's talk about somebody starting a podcast today. Okay. But then I also want you to tell me, like, how can I well, take advantage of this? Well, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You are contracted under someone else's roof and mm -hmm. rules. So I personally don't know mm -hmm. those rules. I don't know what you can and cannot do. Right? You, if, if, if I say, yo, I want to advertise on your podcast, I might not even be able to because I have to go to Revolt. No, you, no. I have all rights to like bring on my own. You sure? Ads. Yes, that's what the my lawyer is working on right now. Like, cause I I'm gonna bring on my own ads ads as well. Okay. Um. Well, with that, I will go with the first. I will go with what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like your dad could be a a, a sponsor on the yeah. show. He should be the first sponsor. Yeah. Right. So stuff like that. Right. So now your dad, being the fact that he's in a really really prime and great location, he is actually probably friends with. The other businesses around here. Yeah. Right? And the fact that you have a Brooklyn podcast, because you're from Brooklyn, you mm -hmm. rep Brooklyn, I would I would go to, I would have him connect with the business owners in this in this district. That's the fir that's first and prime. First, first and whatever. First. That's the yeah. first thing I would do. Because you have access. This is what you're in front of. The next thing, this is what I would say. Like, if you go into a, a platform like Red Circle, you need a thousand listens a month to to monetize your podcast. Mm -hmm. Release four four podcasts a month, one a week. That's four. You need two hundred and fifty listens per episode. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to start off with. You think so? Yeah, mm -hmm. to start off with. Now let me ask you. This is an hour long. Mm -hmm. If you broke this up into to your hour long, you got your hour long, mm -hmm. but you broke it up into pieces throughout the rest of the week and you uploaded every single day, right, for 30 days. Now you need three and a half people to listen, listen to a piece of content every single day. You got your thousand listens. Mm -hmm. You see how easy that is? Very smart. Very smart. So that's how I would, that's the, <clears throat> that's the quickest way I would say how you monetize your podcast right from day one. Okay. That's from day one. So in 30 days, you'll be, you'll be making money. Okay, now in terms of ads, right? So let's say like my podcast is starting up, but I want to have ads. How much should I be charging? Should I be charging? Like, you know. I mean, you don't have to charge. You can, because cause you, you want a, a proof of concept, right? So you want to, um, you could do like, put like an ad on and, and, and like do it for free and, and show them like a proof of concept. So I got a ABC, um, ABC where, right? Mm -hmm. And I come on your podcast. I, you say, yo, I'm going to do it for free. I'm going to show you I can get you some sales. Mm -hmm. You do an ad for me for sales and I make a thousand dollars. I'm like, oh shit, now it's worth something to me. Now mm -hmm. it's value. You showed me value. So I might, the next episode I want it like, well, yeah, take five on it. You know, mm -hmm. I make a thousand, so I'll take five on it. And it'll be an ongoing relationship because if I'm making money, it makes sense. Yeah. You make it make sense. So yeah, definitely. Um, you want to do like free stuff if you can. Because you're just offering a proof of concept. If you believe, you believe in your product, and if you have listeners, it, it, it makes sense. So, so do y'all offer ads? Like, do y'all allow businesses to do ads on your? Platform? Of course. So how can I get an ad? How much does it cost? Side eye. <laughs> well, did I put you on the spot? No, I mean, I mean, you know, I would, I don't, would never want to hit you in the head like that. You know, say you, oh. you the fam. But we we charge we charge a very significant amount okay. to to run Which ads. Which is understandable because we got to that place, right? Yeah, we don't we don't go by CPM cost mm. per cost per uh I can't cost per cost CPM cost per mile. I think that's what it means. Mm. Um, so basically, that means every thousand listens, you get paid a number, whether it's ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, whatever. So if it's twenty dollars, every thousand listens, you got to pay me twenty dollars. That's what it is, right? So um, we don't we don't actually go by that. We stopped that a long time ago. So what do you do? Um, I didn't believe in that. Um, so we say if you want to advertise on our podcast, it's gonna cost such and such amount. And that's just a number that y'all created. That's the number that we created. That's the number that we felt we value. Mm -hmm. That's our value. Okay. And um and 
companies are are willing to pay that because they know their ROI is going to be greater yeah, than what they get. Like us. fidelity, you got like yeah. They know that they yep. know that our, and they continue to advertise with us because they know our ROI is going to be greater than whatever they pay us, mm -hmm. and it gives them exposure to a different audience that they are not touching. And is it like, do y'all have different packages where it's like, all right, you could pay for a one-time ad or pay for like- The goal is to have long-term mm -hmm. investors, right? Long-term people at sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So obviously, yeah, sometimes we have one-offs one, one -offs, um, and then they become long-term sponsors like Fidelity, like Ally, like mm -hmm. Chase, things mm -hmm. like that. So because they just want to touch and, and get a taste of it, they see it, it works, and then they, they, go, they sign on for a longer period of time. And then you would give a little bit of a discount, of course, yeah. because they give you a, a, a longer extension. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Well, we're going to start wrapping up. I have one, like two last segments, right? So there's one segment is called took it is segment, right? So this is where like one, I'm going to ask you, is there any issue that you're really, really, really passionate about? Any issue? Yeah. Issue or anything that you're really passionate about. Well, right now I'm passionate about my brand. Building my brand. I'm, uh, that's been my number one passion because once I build my brand to a point where I want it to be built, I'm going to start building my son's brand. Mm. So I started building his brand. So, but I said, you know what? I got a, mo I got, got a momentum with Earn Your Leisure. So I'm using, I'm using my momentum and I'm going to build my brand. And once people know you, like you, and then trust you, anything that you put in front of them, they'll, 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 cool it. they'll support it. Yeah. So that's what I'm actually doing right now. You're okay. seeing it in real time. Yeah. Yes, you you are. Like, I watched you grow your page from, like, 10K to, like, 40K followers. Like. Yeah, 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 real time. Yes. Um, And now, took it is segment. So, like, is there ever a time when people doubted you? Because I was watching an episode with Spinx, and he was like, they used to bully you, you know, types of stuff and, like, mm -hmm. stuff. So, it's just... I don't know, bully. I don't think I used that word. All right, not bully. Okay. They used to make fun of me. All right, fun. fun of you. Actually, my friend here, he used to call me mayo, cheese, white dog, all that stuff. Oh. Yeah, not him, not him, not Say him. Say sorry, The other friend, the other Say friend. Say sorry. Say sorry. And he's like my best friend in life. Oh. He's my first friend ever. Oh, and he, and he, he called me white you. white boy and all that stuff. He's my next door neighbor for my, you know, he's, you know, but, you know, look at us. We're best friends. Yeah. It'd be like know, that. Sometimes you got to, people show love in different ways. Yeah. You know, but I'm, yeah, you know, so, yeah, um, yeah I wouldn't say bully. They, I don't think they bully. Did y'all bully me? Maybe they did. I don't know. This made fun. So I wasn't always this big. Mm. That little guy over there was actually bigger than me. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. They all was bigger than me. I was small. And he just woke up one day and he was. Yo, eleventh grade was a great eleventh grade summer was a great year because I got bigger than everybody. I grew a foot in the summer. Wow. Yep. That's Troy funny. was taller than me. Rashad was taller. All of them were. Wow. But see, it was funny until it's not. Well, was that your Tokyo segment? That's what you wanted to It's say? funny to us not. Okay. Because everybody laughed. Yeah. They were laughing. And they might so still on. be laughing, but uh, it's a lot less laughing going on. Now the joke's on them. I don't know if it's on them, but it ain't on me. <laughs> you like that? That, <laughs> that was, was a good. good one. That, that was, was a good, good one. That was a good one. <laughs> All right, man, now for this last segment, what's your favorite financial lyric? I mean, what's your favorite lyric that talks about business, money, or whatever? Like, when you hear that, like, you get in your bag. I'm not a business, but I'm a business man mm, that's it right yeah, there that was the first thing that came to my mind yeah because because that's we have to look at our all of our, ourselves as businesses mm -hmm. we're a walking billboard we're a walking business mm -hmm. i teach that you everyone has to be a brand mm -hmm. no matter what if yeah. you are a brand like him whatever your name is what's your name josh josh ja. Ja. ja has to be a brand because whether it whether or not if this goes a million views, a billion views, or whatever, if Ja is a brand, it's gonna be so much easier for him to make money outside of this because yeah. we all have to diverse our portfolio, diverse our brand. Everyone needs to be a brand. Every single person in this room has to be a brand. Yeah. You have to bring yourself. So yeah. he's 17 years old. He's a filmmaker. He makes films. So bring yourself yeah. now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Let people know. And that's the thing. You could be in a room, right, full of people, and you don't let nobody know what you do. Yeah. That's your 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 disservice to yourself. Yeah. You gotta let every every person you meet needs to know that you're a filmmaker. Every single person. If I left this room, you would have never told me you're, you're a filmmaker. Well, so I'm gonna put all my my people on. You she, gotta she introduce works on Capitol Hill. No, no, no. But that's She's they gotta learn. They gotta they gotta see. learn how to do that. Yeah. They gotta learn. Like you gotta say, yo, introduce. Like, listen, my name is Josh. Ja, my name is Ja. I'm a filmmaker. I'm 17 years old. I'm I'm willing to do it. You gotta you gotta do it from day one. Yeah. Start. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to brand yourself and let people know what you do. Because if people don't know what you do, you, they'll never know. That's a fact. And you never know who's going to be your next client, your next business. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you for coming on the nah, platform. Thank you. Thank like, you. Thank you. Thank you. So I appreciate this it. Was, this was very good. Like, I, I know my people's going to appreciate this. Like, you dropped a lot of gems. We yep. talked about podcasts. Yeah, X is definitely going to appreciate this. <laughs> Look at her. Yo! I stopped in her steps. She was going, damn. Is she still friends with her? Yeah, that's what it is. All right, all right, all right. Cut, cut, cut. Nah, thank you, thank you. But appreciate you. All right, y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Let's get it, y'all. Let's go!